going to make it larger. Yeah. Corner, bottom right hand corner. No, no, that's a nice line. I thought it was really worth hearing. Yes. Um, so anyway, about the program. The Enterprise and Women program actually is designed to help women of color, small business owners overcome obstacles to growth, to learn from each other. And that was that networking question that I think Erica asked. How important is that? Um, to create a business network and to gain an assessment of your own business. So what you're going to do is take a look at your own business and analyze where it is now and where you want it to go. Um, during the program, we will develop a strategic action plan, which is a roadmap for growth. Um, we will look at and gain an access to industry experts. Uh, we'll become a part of a community of peers who are all dedicated the average 40 year survival rate for women, the average survival rate for women was four years. And that's compared to 72% for men and at a rate of 66% for women. So women businesses survive at 66% rate, whereas men survive at 72%. And we want to understand why. Why is that? This is according to the women's business research. And the most glaring needs for women stem from these items. A lack of knowledge on how to grow a business from point A to point B. That's one of the reasons why women don't survive as long term as men do. Uh, becoming an employer firm. And what that means is when we are when we're doing when we're operating our business, we do everything. Medetta even pointed to the fact that she, she does everything, or she did everything. But it's okay to do everything, but it's also okay to know when it's not okay to do everything. Because the business won't grow if you are holding up everything close to your chest. So that's one of the issues as well. And then moving from the technical firm to the business leader. The technical firm is your trade. It's what you're good at. You know, it's what you aspire to sell if it's a product. It's what you aspire to sell if it's a service. But at some point, we have to realize that we need to move from the technical and become the business leader and let somebody else be the technical. You can oversee the technical because there's a standard that you want to maintain, but it doesn't mean you have to create and manufacture the technical. Also today, America's entrepreneurs are more diverse racially, gender-wise, and age-wise. Decades from now, entrepreneurs will be more dramatically different than today. And the biggest challenge in the entrepreneur of the future is that that business owner is more likely to be a woman or a minority. That's the fastest growing segment of business ownership in the United States. There's 1.9 million firms that are majority owned by women of color in the United States. These firms employ 1.2 million people and generate $165 billion in revenue annually. So we have to decide where in that picture do we fit? You know, what, what are some of the opportunities for revenue generating uh, ideas that we can fit into? And when you're looking at the projections of your particular industry, you look at the trends over a period of five or so years, and you look at, is it growing? Is it not growing? Is it decreasing? And if it's growing, which clearly this is what this is indicating, that um, there, there's $165 billion in revenue that's available annually, you have to figure out where in there are you going to fall. You know, what, what can you get a piece of the pie of? Between 2002 and 2008, and that's an old figure, these firms that we see here today uh, generate, these firms grew faster than all privately held firms. The format of the, of the program that we will be operating here for Enterprise and Women is there will be workshop, workshop sessions that offer a combination of lectures and interactive exercises. There will be six meetings at two hours each beginning January through 
through June 2015. So we will meet once a month, every fourth Wednesday, in this room, and we will focus on different aspects of business management, but focusing on areas that are challenges for women and trying to help us understand better how to mitigate those, how to understand those better, and then use those to our own positive advantage. Uh, another aspect of the program would be mentorship matches, and that's according to business endeavors. Um, last year, we, uh, because of some of the issues that were around the mentorship, we didn't make as many matches as we would wanted to, and that's one of our goals this year is to make sure that every woman you know, has a mentor. And for the mentors, we will be asking them to commit to four hours uh, for six months. And when you're matched with the mentor, it could be one-on-one -on -one or on the phone. Uh, we'll ask the mentee, who would be you, to commit to one personal visit to the mentor's place of business so that you can shadow them and see how they do business. If, for instance, you were matched, uh, say a, a restaurant tour was matched with Mineta, we would want them to spend at least one <coughs> afternoon or evening over at 1300 and kind of walk around with Mineta and be Mineta's shadow. Y'all be scared. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we're also asking the mentee, that would be you, to make one to two telephone calls per month to your mentor during the program. And that's just to engage, to talk about what's going on, to problem solve, to ask questions, get technical advice. And the last part of the program then is uh, social responsibility. And we want everyone to give back to the community. And Manette, again, is a perfect example of social responsibility. She's very engaged in the community. She helps out the youth in the community. She works with the elders in the community. She works with the farmer's market. Uh, she works with enterprising women. <laughs> she works with everybody. So that's her social responsibility. She definitely gives back. And what we want everyone in this room to do is to model that kind of social responsibility behavior. Because we all have something to give. And it's our responsibility, actually, as women, to help pull other women along and to offer information that we have that they may not have that can help them. So what we will be setting up is um, opportunities at different nonprofits or you know, different other uh, entities throughout the area and uh, having you engage with either youth or with uh, girls or with whatever population, you know, you feel the most comfortable with, but spending time with them, volunteering and, you know, helping them understand how life works and helping make a difference in their lives. So, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to move right into the, um, the video. And this video uh, is one that was underwritten, as I said earlier, by the San Francisco Foundation. And it focused on the Enterprising Women program last year. So what you'll see are some of the participants from Enterprising Women. you see the quarter. And uh, just give you an idea of how the program um, impacts some of these women's lives. And uh, before we go into that, Manetta, did you want to say anything? Yeah, I just, I'm going to have to take off, but I'm, I'm leaving my card here for everybody, um, and then I'll have some more up front. I just wanted to say that um, even when you're not, even if you guys are not interested in the restaurant businesses, hell, I'll tell you, I'll be, a, I'll be a mentor over general with helping wherever I can with anybody that has questions. My card is there, you know, always give me a day or two to get back to you. I'm not <coughs> ignoring you, it's just that, you know, there's always a lot of stuff going on, but I will always help you if there's any resources or information that I can give you based on my own experiences or somewhere that I know where to direct you, I will do that, okay? I so you speak with um, you and a panel that Michael Bush was doing at North College. Yeah. yeah. Did you do that program? Yeah. Eight okay. Factors? Yeah. yeah, it was I great, wasn't it? Yeah, love that. See, she's, but, yeah. yeah, see, she's all right, she's on it. She's on it. Okay. All right. Okay. Great. All right. See you guys. Thank you. All right. So this actually, um, can you turn the lights? Can you get the light over? Yes. Okay. This actually is the video, and it's only about I don't know three, four minutes. It seems long, but it's not. So. <laughs> We 
can sit and talk about people coming to the neighborhood all day, but unless you start something for people to come to, then you're not going to be able to shift the PR and how people view a particular neighborhood or community. We really wanted people to see that if you can enjoy the mission, if you can enjoy the tender if you can enjoy all these other communities, you can certainly come here and have a good time and feel more. There's a lot going on here. We'd like to see this area become a tourist destination as well as uh, see more of a diversity of businesses. <coughs> just looking for a job, we're trying to create our own. I'm a good artist, but I'm not good business-wise as far as that side of it. And so when I heard of the Enterprising Women, I was really excited. Women of color have unique challenges as entrepreneurs. And Enterprising Women was born out of the need that we identified that were issues that these women were experiencing topics like sales and mm -hmm. negotiating skills and marketing. These were all the things that the women identified that they needed in order to be successful. The first thing we did was worked on our business plan and that was all through the energy, time, and effort of uh, Urban Solutions. I was able to network with entrepreneurs that were trying to accomplish the same goals I had. Mm -hmm. To help with a business plan, to make a better website for myself, all the logistics that I need to know. They are able to learn from each other's experiences, learn from each other's mistakes, and at the same time, they're able to create new opportunities. We've never owned our own actual physical brick and mortar uh, shop before, and it definitely was a legal thing. To be able to step into that niche where you know, homemade cookies, homemade, yeah, no absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> These women contribute in many ways to the San Francisco community of the field war. When women do well, the family does well. When the family is doing well, the community does well. And when the community is doing well, the whole city is doing better. Well, it's just been a wonderful experience. And I encourage any woman who has a dream and has a, a passion to step out on your feet and go for it. The world needs you. Hmm. All right. Uh, that's your day. Well.